art house cinema can be vastly different from mainstream film, and knowing where and how to begin might be daunting, but hopefully this video will make it easier. This is oversimplifying things massively, but art films are intended for more intellectual or artistic purposes as compared to many Hollywood movies, which are often more entertainment oriented. Before getting into art house cinema, there's a few guidelines that could be helpful. First of all, it's best to be as open-minded as possible and put aside your preconceived notions of what a film should be. These films can be weird, experimental, slow, or offensive, but they can also be incredibly entertaining, fun, or lighthearted. Also, it's absolutely essential you get over any bias you may have against watching subtitled films as many if not most art house films are not produced in the English language. They can come from all over the world and are usually meant for international audiences and film festivals. An easy way to wrap your head around the world of art film is to break it down by director, partly because these are often more auteur-driven works than Hollywood movies. A very accessible art house filmmaker for someone starting out is Akira Kurosawa. The Japanese director made 30 movies over almost 60 years, with many of them considered among the all-time greats. Compared to some other directors I'll get to, he isn't that experimental and has easily digestible narratives, and even some great action scenes. I'd recommend starting out with Rashomon from 1950. It's only 88 minutes long, and its conceit of showing the same event from multiple contradicting perspectives makes for an easy hook, as well as making it clear just how innovative it was. The other common starting point for Kurosawa is Seven Samurai, which is equally as acclaimed as Rashomon, but runs almost three and a half hours. Both star Toshiro Mufune, and his presence alone makes them highly entertaining. From there, a logical next step might be to watch Hidden Fortress or Yojimbo, or if you want to try something from his later color films, I'd say to check out Ron and then Kagamusha. Kurosawa directly influenced the Star Wars movies, so that's a neat bonus for more casual film fans. Another director who is very significant and not too difficult to get into is Jean-Luc Godard. Part of the French New Wave movement, his first feature, Breathless, came out in 1960. It's regarded as one of his most important works, and it's a good introduction to Godard. Breathless is relatively straightforward, and it should be apparent to someone with even a minor knowledge of film history how influential the jump cut editing was. The editing style also makes it visually stimulating, and perhaps easier to digest for a beginner than the long takes that many other art house directors utilize. After that, Band of Outsiders is also pretty accessible. Or if you're up for something more bizarre, Weekend is so weird that it should be at the very least interesting to watch even if you don't care for it. Also part of the French New Wave, and perhaps just as important, is Francois Truffaut. There's a very clear choice as to which of his films to watch first, and that's The 400 Blows, which earned Truffaut the Best Director Award at Cannes in 1959. And Akira Kurosawa called it one of the most beautiful films he's ever seen. A filmmaker who's just as important but not quite as newbie-friendly is Ingmar Bergman. His work can be very overtly philosophical and existential. Bergman definitely lacks the action of some of Kurosawa's work or the humor of Godard, so prepare yourself for some relatively serious and at times depressing films. The best place to start with him is probably what many call his magnum opus, the 1957 film The Seventh Seal, where a knight faces off in a chess match against death. Next, I'd like to bring up a titan of the art house world who is, in my opinion, much harder to get into, and that's Andrei Tarkovsky. The previously mentioned directors are sometimes a little slower than modern mainstream movies, but they don't have anything on Tarkovsky. He used very long takes that would go for up to nine minutes without a cut. Stalker or Solaris are good entry points for his work. The Italian director Federico Fellini is just as influential, but not a personal favorite. His best work is considered by many to be eight and a half, but it's very autobiographical, so I don't think this is a good introduction, as it's more impactful if you have a sense of who he is as a director. His earlier film La Strada isn't too far out there and is also highly acclaimed. La Dolce Vita would be another good one before moving on to eight and a half. French filmmaker Jacques Tati might not be quite as big of a name as the others I've mentioned so far, but I think he's an excellent choice for beginners to art films. His movies from the 1950s like Monsieur Hulot's Holiday and Mon Uncle are full of visual comedy and never somber like so much of art cinema. Then I'd suggest Playtime, which is a visually striking, quirky film and to me among the greatest ever made. David Lynch is another huge name in art house cinema, and some of his films are decently accessible, especially Blue Velvet. His second film, Elephant Man, was a big budget production, but is a good way to ease yourself into the Lynchian madness. Sergei Eisenstein is incredibly important to film history, but his most notable works were from the 1920s, 
so they may not be super easy to watch for someone used to modern movies. Definitely watch his 1925 film Battleship Potemkin as its Odessa step sequence is one of the most significant in all of cinema and changed editing forever. Werner Herzog was part of the German New Wave and has influenced many filmmakers. I'd suggest his 1972 film A Gear, The Wrath of God, which features a magnetic performance from Klaus Kinski and a soundtrack from electronic group Popol Vuh. Louis Bunuel made surrealist films from the 1920s to the 1970s. Since it's only a short, his 1929 work Un Chien Andalou is where I think you should start, especially since it was made with famous painter Salvador Dali and has one of the most iconic shots in cinema history. Japanese director Yasujiro Ozu is not as well known as Kurosawa, but no less crucial to film history. His movies are subtle, quiet, and contemplative, and a bit harder to get into than Kurosawa's. Ozu's cinematography isn't as showy with minimal camera movement, but his use of composition is masterful. Tokyo Story, which I'd say to watch first, is often called his masterpiece and was picked by BFI as the third best film ever in 2012. Lars von Trier is more recent than most of the others I've touched on so far and very well known among cinephiles. He stayed true to his art house roots and still got into work with some very famous actors and actresses like Nicole Kidman and Kirsten Dunst. His 2003 film Dogville is a good one to start with. It is almost three hours long, but the bold choice of having a set that consists of chalk outlines representing houses and roads makes for an undeniably unique experience. It's disturbing, but not as much so as some of his other films like Antichrist. This is just scratching the surface, and it would take forever to name every notable filmmaker. Others I'll just briefly mention include Michelangelo Antonioni's Blow Up, Robert Bresson's Pickpocket, Jean Renoir's The Rules of the Game, Wong Kar Wai's Chung King Express, Peter Greenaway's The Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover, Satyajit Ray's Apu Trilogy, and Shustov Kshlavsky's Three Colors Trilogy. If there's a director you think I overlooked, I may have excluded them for a couple of reasons. I decided to exclude what I consider to be more strictly experimental filmmakers like Maya Darren or Stan Brakhage, partly for time and partly because I have a separate series on experimental films. The distinction is somewhat arbitrary and mainly done out of convenience. I also didn't bring up directors like Stanley Kubrick, who I think straddle the line between art house and mainstream filmmaking. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.